Hope you're having a good weekend. Today's project is going to be, we're going to be making one of these, but we're going to soup it up and kick it up a notch. So make it a lot more interesting and give you some ideas on how it can fit your decor a little better. Love that word, right? Um, basically make it match your stuff. You know, this is the style I like, but the one I'm going to make today is a little bit more for my daughter that's in Alaska. She likes the colorful stuff, so stay tuned and you'll see what we're going to do. It's going to involve fire, stain, and a lot of cutting. Right, it's another hot one out here. It's supposed to be like 107, 108 today, I think. Um, so anyway, let's get started on this. I've got everything pretty much set up. So um, here's your cut list. Uh, I'll have this in the link below, but you just, uh, I've got them all marked out here with your sizes and stuff. Um, this last one here, uh, right here, this not last one actually, but this one, this one right here um, is the one you're going to rip in half. So there's actually four pieces going to be cut from that one there. So just make sure you cut all these to length, then you can rip this one in half, and then go back and um, when I get, get to that part, I'll write the sizes down here for you. Um, for these for the left and right and uh, that's how you do it. There's also another option that I wrote down here On this if you wanted to make different shapes now, of course I'm gonna make the cross because that's what I like and I'm gonna put um, Well, you'll see I'm gonna put some lighting on it and some little bit different color stain and stuff But if you want to do other shapes, you can either use a scroll saw to cut it out or You know pre-design your shape if you do like a star or something It's probably just easier to just use the chop saw and on the straight cuts and stuff but you can pretty much make anything that you want to out of this um, and this is how I drew that up and you still can do it out of two boards they'll just be a little bit more waste so if you want to do it that way you just cut everything to length um, I'll draw one of those up in there too uh, but you just cut everything to the full length of the panel <clears throat> so for say like this you would cut this board well actually these two come together right so this uh, this small one, this small one, this one, and this one are all going to be out of that one piece. And then the rest of them, you know, of course, are just one by fours. But basically, you would just cut this entire piece here, right here, and here, and here, and here, and all to length. So once you cut all these pieces to the same length, then you just lay it out like this and clamp it together. Then you would trace whatever design you want, be it a star, a fish, a cross, um... I don't know, the word love or home or your family name, whatever you wanted to do, you would trace it out on here. Then you could just unclamp it and take it to a band saw or even just a little jigsaw or something and cut your lines out and then put it back together like a puzzle and glue it up. Then you could have pretty much unlimited um, options of shapes or sayings or whatever you wanted to do. So that's another option, you know, just cut them to length and then set it out, trace your drawing and do it that way. But I'm going to do my cross, so I'm going to cut it to the cut list, uh, the correct sizes, and just use a two inch spacer to, because um, this is two inches in here, just use a two inch spacer to lay it out. All right, let me get the boards cut out. Also a quick tip to uh, save you some time on this one. This is not perfect, it's all just a visual thing, so um, you don't have to worry about being exact on your measurements, so you can just go ahead and draw um, out all your marks on the board uh, as you go on one you know just draw both of them and then just go to the saw and chop 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 and it'll save you a little bit of time if you want to guesstimate your curve um, for an eighth of an inch or whatever you have uh, you can do that as well but I'm just gonna mark it at, at the marking here of 31.5 30.5 21.5 and just move along and then just go chop them all down so that'll save you some time <laughs> Okay, so now that you've got your uh, two ripped down, you can finish cutting. I went ahead and wrote them on here. I'll post them below too. Um, you're just going to cut your right and left, uh, which would be, you know, these two here. You want to cut these out of the same board, and you want to cut these two out of the same board, this one and this one. So that way that you have one of each on each side, right? If you cut 
both from this and you didn't rip them exactly right, you know, like, like mine might be just a little bit off on the width, um, just a touch. See, you can see that right there, just a little bit. Um, that'll make a problem when you glue, but as long as you cut the left and the right from one board and the left and the right from the other board, um, you'll be fine because you'll have the same on both sides, right? you'll have one of each. So just do that. And then what I went back in and I went ahead and marked the, uh, the offset here on the first side. So yeah, if you do this, make a mark at one inch, then on this board you make a mark at two inches. This one is going to be four inches, three, two, three and a half. And then you can get this offset on this side just from the measurements here. And then this is three inches and two inches wide. So this gap will be eight inches and this gap all the way down will be two. So um, you can just measure it that way for the crosses. And if you want to do it the other way, like I said, and just don't cut these out until last, you can make any shape you want. So I'm going to go get these cut and then we'll start laying it out, glue it together, and then we'll get it stained. So anyway, basically you just want to mark this off and adjust this side here to the measurements. So you start with this uh, one inch gap in, and then you come down to two and four, three and a half, blah, blah, blah. These are all going to be straight, and this should be a three inch gap right in there. And then same thing on this side, it's going to be two inches straight down for the cross side, and then two plus three more inches would be eight, so it should be eight between these two short ones and then just line them all up and then you can glue it down. Okay, and I happen to have a piece of the two inch flat bar that I used for the crosses. Um, and that's actually what I used on the ones that I made for the show, was I put a piece of this stuff in there, just a pre-made cross already. So now if you have something like this, you don't even really have to measure on this side. You just scoot everything in until it hits that cross or that that side right and now you've got everything nice and lined up for that then you just measure this one piece and that's it and it should be three inches out from the edge so let's just go with this guy three inches and there's my cross getting clamped and glued let that dry and just to make it real easy to line everything back up um, I'm going to sand this down real good and get it smooth before I do anything. So I'm just going to draw a line right here. And that will line everything up on that side. And then the same thing here. And I just get everything lined up on the line when I come back to glue it and clamp it. If you don't want to use glue, you could use pocket holes. Um, that's just a lot of pocket holes to do. So, And it's just a, for me, it's just a wall hanging, so glue will be plenty. Unless you slam the door and it falls down a bunch of times, just glue should hold it just fine. It's so hot out here, everything's drying fast. So line up your little lines. And you should be good to go. And then I just use two boards as kind of spacers so that it can um, span. This thing doesn't rest on top of it. Landscape bricks make great weights. <clears throat> and I'll see you when this dries. doesn't like a little bit of fire. Now I'm not going to do this several times. If you're actually trying to preserve it and uh, make it kind of weathered, um, this is a technique I guess that I can't even say the name, so shoot gun or something, I don't know. <clears throat> it's a technique for uh, preserving the wood without being treated, of course, you know, uh, with the chemicals and crap, but 
Um, you do it several times and brush it off, get a good brush and everything, but I'm really doing it because this is gonna be stored in, inside on the wall, of course, so it doesn't necessarily have to be weather resistant. Um, I just like the look of it because of the dark um, charred area and then the stain and then the natural color. You know, it just looks really cool when it's stained. So that's the only thing I'm doing. So otherwise you would be really careful, scrape this off really well, get all the chard off, um, do it again, you know, and then do it again. And I think they say like three times um, is, the, is the proper wet method to do this. But again, I'm just going for the look more than the actual you know, function of it. So I'm just gonna get it off, wipe all the soot off, and then go ahead and stain it. So for this, I'm just going to cut a piece of uh, one inch angle iron that I have. Um, you could use a piece of uh, the extra one by four that you have or anything. This is going to be for something for me to um, mount the LED lights across here, shining onto um, the side um, anyway, and then screw this down to the, the back of it. I'm going to cut one at 18 inch that goes all the way across all of the boards, and then I'll cut one little six inches or so span two boards and that'll be where the other side of the wire uh, will attach um, but on some of the other ones that I made that um, I have I just used uh, one by four the extra pieces on the back I just uh, glued and, st and uh, tacked those with the uh, brad nailer to the back and did the same thing and screwed the wire that goes um, you know that you hang it with like a picture wire picture frame hole wire and I just use that. So you could use the same thing. Um, just use a piece of one by four or even just a furring strip, a little one by two or something um, would be plenty. Um, just something to screw the, <clears throat> wrap the wire around, screw in, and then go down. And I'll show you that in a minute, of course. Um, I'm gonna use this just because I have it and it'll be a little easier. Like I said, you could use, just use some scrap, you know, pieces of this. If you wanna rip it in half, you you can, otherwise you can just use it like this. It's going to be on the back of the wall, so who cares, right? And then I'm using just some junk old three quarter inch screws that I've got to put in there. And then the only thing that'll be left is wait for that awesome, sexy, beautiful parts woman I have that always seems to bring me the parts when I need it. And she's uh, at Academy finding me the LED light that I want. Um, and then that'll be the final touch on here and give it a nice little accent when it's hanging on the wall. I'm probably just going to use a little 9 volt battery. Um, if you don't mind having a cord hanging down or something, you could probably just buy you a, you know, any old LED off of Amazon or whatever. But um, I am just going to use the 9 volt battery, probably put some Velcro on here and hang it on there like that. And um, I'm thinking about just putting it on here and seeing how it shines. Um, it should shine and give it a nice little accent all the way out to this side, um, doing it that way and the bottom and the top. So that's what I'm hoping will work. And then I'll just put the uh, wire hanger here and we'll be good to go. Well, this is a little bit bigger than I thought. Um, I guess I just didn't pay any attention. It looks smaller in our um, camper, but this is the same one that we have in the camper for the uh, LED lights. Um, it is flexible, so maybe I can just uh, sticky tape it on here like this. I'll wipe this off with some um, lacquer thinner and stuff and get all that oily mill scale and stuff, well, all of that off of there, that oily residue that leaves your hands black. Get that off so that this tape will stick real good, and um, I'll just do that. And then I will, maybe I'll put a little piece of board down here and stick it like that, and then I'll just put the 9 volt battery over here. 9 volt battery should run this. It's a uh, it's a 12 volt um, it's a 12 volt light, of course, but 9 volt should 
should run it good enough, and then you won't have to worry about a cord hanging down or anything like that. Well, they sure didn't lie. It was hot today. It's like 9.30, and I'm still sweating like, like crazy out here. Um, I don't know, I think it got up to 107 today. So I'm just gonna put these two little, these were extras off of the, the cut tonight. So I'm just gonna screw those down here somewhere. I think a nine volt battery will run this just fine, um, but we'll we're gonna check it out here in just a second. I don't have a nine volt battery, but I do have a little uh, uh, you know one of those plug in type uh, adapters that will work, and it has nine volt setting on it, so adjustable adapters, and that should be good to uh, at least test it out and see. There is the final product. I don't have a 9 volt battery. Um, I'll just get a piece of Velcro and uh, wrap the wire up in the back behind it and then put a piece of Velcro uh, against the angle iron to hold it. Um, you can just put a piece of Velcro on the back of the board for yours and uh, that'll hold the battery back there. But I've got this set on 9 volts. Um, so it will run it with a 9 volt battery. Just got these from Academy. And uh, there it is. So that's what it looks like on the wall in the dark. It's a nice little accent. Uh, turned out just like I wanted, pretty much. Um, I didn't want light everywhere. I just wanted it to kind of be on bright one side and then it shines onto the boards over here on this side. And then from the top and the bottom. So, alrighty, there you go, another project. And like I said, you can modify this one to anything that you want. Um, just take a little bit more time when you're cutting if you want to do a more elaborate shape and then of course you can stain it in any color that you want to. As always please like, subscribe, leave comments below and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.